Hi, I'm Ben Wadilla. Today on Saturday Mechanic, we're going to upgrade a powertrain controller for more horsepower. So when we say we're upgrading the powertrain control module for more power, what does that mean? Well, the powertrain control module, or PCM, is basically the brains of your powertrain. It controls your engine and your transmission and what they do in relation to the signals coming in and what what you're asking for as far as throttle response goes. It takes the various signals from the car, translates them into something that the engine can work with, and outputs signals to your injectors, your coils, and spark plugs, and blah, 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 all this stuff that makes your engine run. So what we're gonna be doing today is monkeying a little bit with that, that programming. The software in there is in the, in the computer is designed specifically for reliability, longevity, fuel economy, ease of driving, all that stuff that is very important to a manufacturer. But if you're off warranty, you can tweak with that a little bit. What we've got here today is a little box, basically, from a company called Berger Motorsports. You can get all kinds of these, though, and some are much easier to install than, than this one. The idea here is this is a little piece of memory, and on that memory is a new piece of software. And that software, will change the way that the engine controller works. This car is a twin turbo straight six, so what this is gonna do is change the way the turbo controller works. And that'll give us a little bit more boost on the top end and up to 40 horsepower. This thing costs $95, which is practically nothing for that kind of horsepower upgrade. 40 horsepower is probably on the top end of what you wanna do safely. You could probably push it a little bit further, but just with tuning, you want to be careful on, on adding uh, software to push the engine forward. You can very easily detonate an engine with just software. Uh, I've seen guys in tuning shops do it. But 30 or 40 horsepower, even 50 or 60, it's probably in the safe range. You don't want to go much further than that. So what we're going to do is we're going to dig around in the cowl of the car and get to the powertrain control module and plug these pieces in to the connectors in there. It's a little bit scary, but it's not that bad. And when we're done, the turbo controller will be in here and not in there. And that'll give us more, more horsepower. Should be fun too. So now that we've got full access to our powertrain control module, we can start to talk about the steps to get these, this thing upgraded. Before you get anywhere with touching any of these connectors, read the instructions over and over and over again so you know exactly what you're doing. The last thing you want to do is make a misstep in here because it's very possible that you could brick your car. Just turn it into a very effective means of holding down your driveway. The first step is almost always to unplug the battery. This is in the back, I've already done that. Uh, you also have to let the car sit for a while so that the computer is in an inert state. From there, you can start working. So the first step on this particular upgrade, this is this one on its own, is to pull this PCM out just a little bit. We can wiggle it, I think, there we go. I'll be pulling off this, this first connector. Should, grab the screwdriver, slide out. Uh-oh, I think I might have too many wires in the way. There we go. So, here's what we're looking at. This is the connector that plugs into this port. All these pins need to go somewhere. What we're gonna be doing is actually prying a couple of pins out, replacing it with the pins on that little box that I have and, re and replacing this thing. So the signals that pass through this box are actually replaced with the ones that have been modified by that turbo controller. So we actually have to pull out one of these sub connectors, which is gonna be a little bit of a tedious task. I'm gonna need a set of picks, I think, for that one. All right, so we have to actually take this sub-connector out, which is a little exciting, but it's not that hard, actually. You kind of just pry at this top corner. There's a little clip in there. Oh, see, it came out, and it slides straight out of the 
connector as a sub connector. Now, whenever you're looking at some of these sub connectors, they all are almost always labeled rather clearly. Some are better than others. This one is a total of 44 pin positions. You can tell by the count on this one. It starts here, one, and goes to 22 on this side. So it's pins one through 22. And on this side, pins 23 to 44. So what we're gonna do is actually pull out a couple of these wires and replace them with the wires on here. And we're gonna start on this side and we'll pull out wire 10. So we count the slots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it's this yellow guy right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our pick very gently push down and that should allow us to slide this out slides right out so there's that one now in its place we're going to put the yellow wire female connector right where it was in the number 10 slot right like that clicks in place. And then on the opposite side, we're actually going to slide this pin in here so that the signal is, it's going to be basically cheated around the PCM. It'll go into the box and then back out, which is pretty cool. It's very clever. Before we do that though, we're going to replace the one on the other side. And that one is pin number 32. So we'll flip it over to the other side. And this one starts at number 23 over here. So you count from here, 23 to 32. Uh, 23, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 32 here. And that's the red and black wire here. All right, so we'll pull that one out too. Do the same replacement song and dance. Okay. Okay, so we've got that in place. Now we've got these two wires that need to be plugged in to their, their mates, basically. The yellow wire goes to here. Don't force these things, they should go in smoothly. And the black wire goes in here, like that. Now the thing is, you don't really want to leave these exposed like this since they'll be in an underhood condition. This box, it's probably watertight, but I prefer to have this thing sealed up. One option is electrical tape. Another option is a heat shrink tubing. Either one will work. I do have electrical tape that'll do for now. Basically all I want to do is make sure that these are sealed and don't come apart and don't have any water intrusion. Even though it's a sealed box, I mean, you really just want to make sure that these things stay together, don't come apart when they're, when the engine's rattling around. So then you lose your boost controller and that would be very bad. So we will Wrap these up. Actually, you know, before you even get to this step, it's probably a good idea if you're doing something this in-depth and this close to the engine controller to double, triple, quadruple check your work to make sure everything is exactly correct before you put it back together. You don't want to put any question on whether or not you've got these things hooked up right because when you plug it all back together, start the car up, you never know what's going to happen if it's wrong. We've got this thing rigged in and set aside. Now we can slide our plug connectors back together. That's as easy as putting it in place. And clip, that's back in. Now we can plug it back into our PCM. It's gonna be a little bit tricky. Obviously, this is not something that a manufacturer wants you to do when you 
claim that this is a car under warranty. So don't expect to ever have this thing approved at a BMW dealership or at any dealership that you take it to once you've done this. This isn't technically an off-road modification, although that's really just a way to get around the legal, uh, the legal nanny states. So this actually is a convenient size because there's a holder that's vacant in here and we can actually slide it down and pop it right in there. And we are set. It's probably a good idea to try the engine at this point and make sure it still works. All right, so I got the battery hooked up in the back again. So we've got power, as you can see. The only thing now is to test to make sure that this is an, a correct installation and the engine fires up. All right, everything looks good so far. Let's start the engine. Looks good. And it revs fine. All right. With that, that's pretty much done. We just gotta wrap up everything underneath. The only real test now is to go take it out on the road and see what she'll do. If you've seen anything on today's episode that you have a question about, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. Mm -hmm.